Hi, I'm going to redo William Barclay's Daily Celebration. And this is a good one. Um, William Barclay lived from 1907 till 1978. This book was written in the 70s. Um, he was a theologian and a writer. He lived in Glasgow, Scotland. And he was a you know, universal Christian. He believed in the salvation of all. It doesn't mean you get away with anything. There's still a judgment. But this is about new translations. And, you know, keep in mind that this was written in the 70s, 1970s. There has never been a time when there has been such a flood of new translations of the New Testament as there has been in the past generation. The number of these new translations has puzzled some people. There are some people who ask, why new translations at all? Why cannot we rest content with the authorized version? That's the King James Version. There are some people for whom the authorized version is the Bible and who come near to resenting any attempt to change it. I had met people in Georgia in the Baptist church who are King James only. You know, like they don't read or like any other translations. There are some who would rather have the familiar cadences of the authorized version than any of the new translations. Why then are the new translations necessary? There are more than there is more than one answer to that question. The authorized version emerged in 1611. The basic of the basis of the Greek text from which its translation was made was the text of Erasmus, whose first edition was published in 1516. Now, obviously, the older a Greek tran tran manuscript of the Old Testament is, the more likely it is to be correct. Every time a manuscript was copied, new errors crept in. The nearer a manuscript is to the original writing, the less chance there is for error and the more likely it is to be accurate. The earliest manuscript Erasmus used for the Gospels belonged to, to the 15th century. The earliest he had for Acts and for the Pauline letters was from the 12th to 14th century. The earliest manuscript he had for the Revelation belonged to the 12th century, and it actually broke off at Revelation 22:15, the last verse of Revelation. Erasmus supplied himself in Greek by translating the Latin of the Vulgate back into Greek. Wow, this is deep. <laughs> this is... This is the Greek text from which the authorized version was made. No manuscript was used earlier than the 12th century. As the years went on, far older manuscripts were discovered. In the 19th century, oh my goodness, I can't say this guy's name, Tischikodorf, um, it's T I S. C H E N D O R F discovered Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus <laughs> became available, and both of these manuscripts date back to the fourth century. Wow. In the present century, in the in 1931, Chester Beatty manuscripts were discovered and they date back to some, in some cases, to the early part 
of the third century. As, was, as recently as 1958, the Bodmer manuscripts were discovered and they date as far back as AD 200 or thereby. This means that we now possess manuscripts of the New Testament, which are 1,000 years older than anything from which the authorized version was made. 1,000 years nearer to the originals, which are therefore very much more accurate. The materials which we, we possess from which to make a translation are incomparably superior to anything that was available when the authorized version was produced. Wow, I didn't know this. That's amazing. So, that's why I'm, I'm reading this. <laughs> so, because it's so good. I feel like he's very thorough. Anyways, I'm gonna let you go. Don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red because Red is praying for you. Bye.